Words cannot describe alone just how much I dread every time I turn on a WWE show, whether that be Raw or whether that be a pay-per-view. And the first sounds I hear are the voices of Michael Cole, JBL, and Byron Saxton. Nothing puts me in a worse mood or brings me down more at this point than having to listen to these three suck fests on commentary. Michael Cole, when's the last time he gave a fuck? Byron Saxton has as much business as me talking about big time WWE matches for pay on television. And furthermore, I most certainly could do it in a more entertaining, engaging, and exciting, charismatic way than he could. And JBL, who's supposed to be the credibility for this entire commentary team to make you remember, hey, this isn't JR and Jerry Lawler from 15 years ago, but we're okay with that. This is the guy that should be helping to get the villains over like villains and the heroes over like heroes. And instead, he doesn't give a fuck either. And there's two ways to not give a fuck. There's the not give a fuck where you'll do anything and you'll say anything and it could be cool and awesome in its own great way. Or you can have the JBL not give a fuck where he just really doesn't give a fuck. You could tell he's not tuned in. He's not plugged in. It doesn't really matter to him what's going on. He's just there to collect a paycheck. Period. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But get off of fucking WWE television if that's what the hell you're going to do. There's over 7 billion people in this world. 7 billion! And the WWE settles for these three fucks on their commentary team. There are times where I wonder if the reason I am the way that I am with the current pop product isn't in large part due to how shitty this commentary team is. Because all these things that I don't like, and they are too numerous to name here about the current state of the WWE product, imagine how much better it would be if I had a really good storytelling play-by-play -play commentator that actually called the fucking action in the ring. If I had a color commentator that actually deserved to be a fucking color commentator, and I had a color commentator that actually got the heels over, in particular the way the heels are supposed to fucking get over. And instead I get none of that. Over 7 billion goddamn people in the world and we can get three better commentators than this? Fucking bring back Hugo Savinovich. Bring back one of the German fucks to say Sprechenzi Dick every once in a while. Find Mauro Ranallo. And there you go. A thousand times better a commentary team. And part of the appeal, frankly, would be that we couldn't understand what the hell they're saying half the damn time. Because frankly, I don't know what the fuck the current commentary team is saying most of the time. And it's just something, as soon as I hear these three voices, man, any excitement level that I have, not that there's very much to begin with, just instantly bottoms out. And it's just like, oh God, from Jump Street, it's going to be one of those fucking nights. And it just continues throughout the whole course of the night. And I don't mean to just blame the commentators for long for how crappy this show was too, but they were a part of it. And there's got to be something they could do to be better. Or there's got to be something the WWE could do in a planet of over 7 million people to find three stiffs that could even pretend to be just a little bit better than these three asshats we have to listen to every single goddamn week. And when it comes to extreme rules, it's really hard to me to make an extreme rule show bad. You could do crazy shit in your matches. You could spot fest the fuck out of things. A lot of times these feuds, in theory, have been advanced to a point where the match stipulations are somewhat justified. It's really, really hard to have a bad show. Yet the WWE managed to do just that. You know, I just look at it and it's a combination of many things. Um, poor storytelling, a lack of character development, you know, the, the typical complaints. A lot of things where you could just see the spinning of the wheels commencing, and a lot of things that make you feel like this is one gigantic waste of time. Now, I enjoyed the main event, and the main event alone, and even that I had my problems with. And I liked the surprise that we got at the end of the night. It was cool. At least I got something out of this show. So while I don't feel it was a good show in any way, shape, or form, it wasn't quite, quite the epic waste of time to me that WrestleMania and Payback both ultimately were. It was a mild waste of time. A mild one. Like, you look at the beginning, and you've got 
Anderson and Gallows. Oh, the club versus the Usos. We're going to boot the Usos now because we don't like Roman Reigns and they're sticking up for their family because that's a stupid thing to do because it's not awesome because Roman Reigns isn't awesome. And the Bullet Club, these two bald fucking jabbers that six months from now will be enhancement talents or out of TV if not future endeavored. We love them because they went to New Japan and that's awesome. Ah, shut the fuck up. These two bald, boring fucks bring nothing to the table. It's like a souped-up version of the Basham Brothers. A souped-up version! And not a good one either. These two dumpy, frumpy-looking motherfuckers. You, did you have people that are actually excited about these guys? I mean, what the fuck are you going to do with them? There's no personality. There is nothing interesting. You can take your bullet club and shove it down your throat and pound it up your fucking ass because newsflash, ding dong, dumb dicks, this ain't fucking Japan and that shit ain't any goddamn good here. Period. It's got as, about as much value as the goddamn yen. Get the fuck out of here. Well, at least they win over the Usos. Skip de skip and whoop de fucking do. It doesn't change the fact that this used to be Festus that this used to be a member of the Straight Edge Society, who went to TNA and became a member of easily the worst faction in the history of the professional wrestling business in the Aces and A's. But now, it's the Bullet Club. That came from Japan. Yeah, it's awesome. Ah, shut up. Mediocre opening match. The bald jobber fucks go over next. U.S. title match. Callisto actually gets on the main card. Of course he does, so that way he can drop the strap to somebody. Because that's how you make a star. And then you get Rusev here. You know, Rusev's better than I think he's given credit for. The unfortunate thing is, is that when you look at Rusev and where he is in 2016, he's basically in the exact same fucking spot that he was in 2014. Two years later, no character progression. Two years later, we're literally doing the same shit. Now we've put Lana back with him, but she's in a much more subservient type of submissive Vince and Kevin Dunn could beat off to gay porn and carrots thinking about this type of shit. Yeah, traditional women's roles in the 40s and 50s fucking rock! Jesus Christ. So two years later, Rusev's back to being the United States champion with a lot of his fucking side. You know, Rusev's got a little something. He's not terrible in the ring. He's got a bit of a unique look. He's a bigger dude. You know, in a company that needs bigger, competent dudes and future opponents for guys like Roman Reigns, you should be looking at a Rusev as a guy that's a future opponent for Roman Reigns, not potentially future fodder for somebody like John Cena. The point I'm getting at here is that two years later, you've done nothing with Rusev. Two years later, you are literally back to square fucking one. Why would we ever care about any of these fucking characters if nothing is ever going to be different, if nothing ever changes? I think it's a fair question. Your tag title match. You had, what, VOD Villains and The New Day? There's a secret small part of me that almost wished the WWE would have trolled the fuck out of everybody here and put the VOD Villains over. <laughs> People don't like them. <laughs> and it would have been fucking awesome to see the reaction of the VOD Villains winning. I don't know why they had to do them so dirty and bogus. You know, they hit the their finish on fucking Xavier Woods. And of all people, Xavier Woods is kicking out! Xavier Woods! He's kicking out! <laughs> I, I, I guess. I fucking guess. I don't care, honestly. Just get me to the point where you've got New Day versus Cass and Amori, and let's make some fucking magic heading into SummerSlam, perhaps, shall we? Um, and then you had, before you got to the main event, Two just brutally awful featured matches. Just brutal and bad in their own ways. This Ambrose Asylum match between Chris Jericho and, and Dean Ambrose was the absolute drizzling shits. It was way too fucking long. These guys spent more time reaching for weapons than actually fighting each other, wrestling each other, and using said weapons that took way too damn long for them to get. If this was a, another wrestling company, we'd be talking about how this was a Vince Russo special and how fucking dumb and stupid this match was. I'm uh, sure you will have those because it involved Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose that will want to make this out to be a whole lot better than it was. And it wasn't. This match was shit, and everybody fucking knows it. A half-hour snooze fest if I have ever fucking seen it. And at some point in time, when are people going to start taking Dean Ambrose to task? The simple fact of the matter is, whether you want to agree with me or not, 
you've seen some type of growth and some type of improvement out of Roman Reigns. Maybe it doesn't manifest on the microphone per se, but there are other ways that he has improved and that he has, has grown as a performer. There's no question. And on the same token, I thought over the past few years, you've seen a lot of growth and progression and development and improvement in Seth Rollins. You know, he's done a tremendous job of improving and becoming a more well-rounded performer. But here is fucking Dean Ambrose. Newsflash, dude! Do something with your hideous fucking hair, wash your goddamn ass, and stop pretending like this is goddamn CZW! Not one bit of improvement, in fact, regression out of this asshole the past few years. How the fuck do you get to the big stage and you suck worse than you ever have in your entire career? And that's the exact truth. His match at WrestleMania against Lesnar was shit. His match with Jericho at Payback wasn't very good. And this is another featured match with a big name that in theory should be awesome and very, very good. It's an Extreme Rules match. How do you fuck it up? Yet for the second time out of three pay-per-views, we've got an Extreme Stipulation type of match that Dean Ambrose has fucked up. It's like he's literally gotten complacent. He's gotten to the show, he's gotten to his average-looking lady in Renee Young, and he's good in his plot in life. Well, you know what? Fuck off. You should be a whole lot better. You can be a whole lot better. And if you don't start to work to actually improve in all facets and capacities, hopefully they drop your ass like a bad habit and put somebody else in your spot on the fucking card that will work to be better. Unbelievable. So many things about Dean Ambrose right now are a colossal waste of mine and everybody's fucking time. And I'm tired of it. And speaking of waste of time, Charlotte and her women's championship reign. Oh, we just had to have her go over WrestleMania. Ah, God, this submission match was shit. I don't know which match was worse. The Ambrose Asylum match or Charlotte's submission match with Natalia. I probably will go more with this submission match, because at least I will say this, and let me backtrack here by simply saying, I do have a lot of respect for Chris Jericho for taking the thumbtack spot like he did, even though it took way too fucking long to build up to it, because he did it without a shirt. I mean, that's just no fun. Probably sit there an hour later still pulling tacks out of his fucking back and out of his ass crap. I mean, so props to him for that, but that spot alone does not save what was a terrible, terrible fucking match. Sometimes just because a match has to go 25 or 30 minutes, or can go 25 or 30 minutes, doesn't mean it should. And at this point in time, when you look at Dean Ambrose and his body of work, frankly, I don't even know why I would book him on a pay-per-view match. Furthermore, if I am going to book him on a pay-per-view match, I don't sure as fuck don't know why I'd book him for anything longer than 10 minutes. If you start getting more in 10 minutes, you're hoping and reaching, this guy fucking sucks, period. And I'm tired of people defending his ass. And I'm tired of people talking about how great Charlotte fucking is. Every fucking match she has... There's several spots that are really botchy, really choppy. Her matches don't flow very well. You know, I was hoping to get more out of her and Natalia again, thinking that they had some experience together, some chemistry together, that this would be better. And instead, this is the shit that we got. And then the fucking finish. Why does this company always insist on having to book their villains, their heels like this? Why do you always want to undercut your bad guys at every single cut? It's okay if you do that every once in a while, but sometimes it's okay if the bad guy wins. Good doesn't always conquer evil. This is not a fair world that we live in. Oftentimes, the biggest jerks and the biggest bums are the ones that get the most. It's the nice guys that get buried and they finish last. That's life. So to me, it's completely ridiculous that they have to always do this and they always make their villains look so weak and they always undercut them and they make them look like cookie cutter chicken shits. And the finish with Dana Brooke, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. And, you know, it's just bad. Like even Natalia sitting there, she's going to stop applying a sharpshooter because she hears music? I don't give a fuck. I'm trying to tap this bitch. No, I'm, I'm not literally trying to tap Ric Flair with a pussy. Nor am I trying to uh, tap uh, a female Jim Neidhart with the penis. Although I will say Natalia has much more redeeming qualities in many different ways, especially physically, than a Charlotte does. Charlotte is manly and not attractive. 
It's, again, it's bad when your two ring announcers have much more boink ability than Charlotte. Yeah, and I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But a lot of y'all beat off the page, so what the fuck do I know? But then we get to the main event. Oh, mercifully, mercifully, oh, thank God. I could not wait for this main event because I assumed, if nothing else, that the chemistry that Styles and Reigns seem to have together in the ring would at least somewhat save this night for me, and maybe something big would happen. And we ultimately got that. Now, a, a couple of things that pissed me off about this is, one, I, I hate that these two guys, you've, you've had all this interference and all this other bullshit. You know, that's not a way to establish Reigns. Frankly, that's not a way to establish Styles. It really doesn't benefit anybody. Especially when you look at the action at Payback and here again at Extreme Rules, there's really a part of me that wishes these two guys would just be able to go one-on-one, -on -one, and there you go. Just let them go. Because you know you're getting to the destination of Reigns winning any fucking ways. And Styles losing to Reigns isn't certainly going to hurt Styles very much. If anything, it's going to make the crowd get even more behind him. But then you got to bring out these bald jobber fucks the club. And then here come the Usos trying to protect their family. And the crowd's booing because they're protecting and helping their family. And then every time Roman and AJ do something that's cool, something that, unlike Dean Ambrose, actually can entertain you, the crowd's still got a chant, you still suck, you still suck. Do people not fucking get it? The WWE gives shit not about how you react. They just give a shit that you react. And as long as you continue to chant something, anything, even if it is completely counterculture to what the WWE wants you to do for Roman Reigns, guess what? In their sick, twisted world, it is going to be further validation and justification for everything that they're fucking doing with the guy. You've been doing this shit for over a decade with fucking Cena. Has the message not sunk in yet? And yet, here we are. I don't know who the bigger idiots are. The people inside of the wrestling business or the people in the stands watching these wrestling events that actually are stupid enough to pay money to see this horse shit. Because you think sitting there and chanting and rebelling is going to make a goddamn bit of difference. How'd that work out so far? How's that worked out the past decade? Egg fucking exactly. Sit the fuck down. But a good match. It felt like a main event. I know a lot of people, because it's Roman Reigns, are going to want to shit on it. And look, Roman Reigns is not perfect. And Roman Reigns is not my choice to be the guy to carry the company in the future. Okay, well, let's get that out of the way. But with that said, he's a hell of a lot better performer than the Dean Ambrose is. He's a hell of a lot better performer than many of these other spot monkeys. And you want to talk about Spot Monkey Fest, you'll go back and be like, why didn't you talk about the IC four-way match? It was awesome. No, it fucking wasn't. I'm tired of these stupid, nonsensical Spot Fest. Y'all can enjoy it. You can have at it, whatever the fucking case might be. But literally, especially when it comes to the stupid shit with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, after all these years, I'm tired of seeing this shit. Anything involving them, I'm tired of seeing this shit. Even that match, ultimately... The Miz retaining in the way he did was a giant, colossal waste of fucking time. I'm tired of this company wasting my fucking time. And when it comes to the awesomeness of the match, guarantee, guarantee, fucking T, guarantee, you give me a couple of weeks, you give me tasteless Tony T inside of a squirreled circle, and I guarantee you, guaranteed, we will put on a more interesting and compelling story-driven match than Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I can do all the flips and all the kicks and Tony T can do all the fat guy stuff and it would be fucking awesome. Of course, since we didn't put ourselves through flaming shards of ass tacks, you guys would think it sucks. But Jesus Christ, what happened to having standards? And again, like I said, that whole IC title match ended up being one ginormous colossal waste a fucking time. Oh, it was a great match, and yeah, shut up. But the one thing that wasn't a waste of time, even though everything with Roman Reigns and AJ Styles ultimately felt like one big waste of time, because you never thought AJ Styles was actually going to go over here, and never, nor did you ever think they were going to back off of Roman Reigns. After this is all over, and you get that good main event match, you actually get something that kind of hooks you in. And this is the trick of WWE to sit there for over three hours almost. And bore the brakes off of you and make you constantly think about why you continue to waste your time on this shit. Why you continue to invest in this company, your time, your energy, your resources. 
Then they give you the return of Seth Rollins. And hey, look at that, Sami Zayn. Hey, look at that, 60% of the fucking roster. Sami Zayn, everybody else, do you see what Seth Rollins did? He fucking hit the gym. Mad respect and props to Seth Rollins for what he did, coming back off of a torn up knee seven months later, coming back even bigger and stronger, fucking looking jacked, looking like a real serious badass. This was some cool shit. This was an awesome finish, I do not deny. And I love the thought of them diving into, for money in the bank and going forward here in the short term, a program between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. You can sign me up for that. You've given me something to give a fuck about. You've given me something. I've got the New Day, Enzo Amore, and Colin Cassidy. I've got them. Now a main event program for the title featuring Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns is something that I can sink my teeth into a little bit. There's natural story there. There's so many different things at play that make this work. And, you know, frankly, I actually, can you believe I'm going to say this? I can't wait to see the matches between these two guys because they probably will kick ass, frankly, to a lesser degree, like AJ Styles and Roman Reigns kicked ass in their own way, even though it got too much about the bullshit and everything else. My hope is, is that with it now being Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, the company believes in Seth Rollins a little bit more. They bought in more to Seth Rollins. They understand Seth Rollins more. They're not afraid to push Seth Rollins more. And as a result, he'll get a chance to stand more on his own two feet. And you're going to get, God forbid, an interesting world title feud. But it still doesn't change the fact that the rest of the show either made me feel like the last several years have been a colossal waste of time, that some of these feature performers really aren't very good at what they do, which is really scary when you think about the future of the company. Uh, I, I did not enjoy this show until I got to the main event. And the main event only kind of saved it. And Seth Rollins' return maybe saved it a little bit more. But it was still pretty much a waste of time. And it just can't be this hard to put together a good wrestling show. It, it just can't be. But yet the WWE once again showed just how much of a challenge that really can be for them, and it's a shame.